<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. We're going to start in a couple of minutes. Okay. All right, I'll try to fix the link problem. <laughs> All right, everyone, we'll get started in about 30 seconds. We'll start with some introductions and then we'll get going into the meat of getting into Google Classroom and how to help your child with that process. All right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name's Peter Halloran, you know me, I'm the principal. I wanna make a couple other introductions, but before I do so, um, please know that this is being recorded this evening um, for, so that I can send it out to people who couldn't make it tonight. So I tell you that so you can decide whether you want to have your camera on or off. That is totally your decision. Um, and if you have any questions, I, can, I have the view where I can see all of you. Uh, please feel free to either raise your hand or you can type a question into the chat and I'll make sure your questions get answered. You don't have to wait for a good time to put your question in the chat. Just go ahead and put it there and then um, we'll wait till we get to a good time to, um, to answer it. Um, a couple of introductions. We have uh, with us um, some Russell staff members. The first one is Anna Purrier. Anna is new to Russell this year. Uh, she is our Title I teacher, halftime Title I teacher and halftime instructional coach. And I can't tell you how grateful I am that we have an instructional coach this year in a year that is um, different instructionally than any other year we've had before. So thank you, Anna, for joining the team and being with us tonight. Um, she was a big part of putting together the instructions for Seesaw and for Google Classroom. We also have Jenna Seaman, who is one of our amazing fourth grade teachers. Uh, Jenna is a little bit of a, a tech guru. She's the person that people go to at the school if they have questions about technology, myself included. And so she put, helped us put together um, a lot of resources for families on Google Classroom. 
she was using Google Classroom last spring when we were doing all remote learning quite a bit and um, was able to help her colleagues uh, in that process as well. So thank you, Jenna, for being here. I don't know, and Darcy Karen is here, I li our librarian as well. She might be able to help us with some questions as we go along. Um, so here is, here's really going to be the order of the night. We're going to play a tutorial for you. You may have watched it before. Um, we, we, we did send it out, but it's good to see these things a second time. And then the rest of the time is really a Q and A um, for any questions you might have. And then at the end of the evening, we're going to say, okay, the part with Clever and Google Classroom is over if you want to log off. But if you need some help doing your annual notices, those forms that we all need to get done for our kiddos, if you want to stay on and we all do that together, we can do that together. So that's the order of the evening. Um, before we get launched into Google Classroom, if you did not see it, the board decided um, on a calendar moving forward. So, and this impacts what we're about to do in terms of remote learning. So if you missed it, and we'll be sending out calendars um, on Monday to everyone about what October looks like. But essentially for the next three, three and a half weeks, we're gonna continue what we're doing, which is two days in person and three days of remote learning. Uh, Monday is a remote learning day for everyone. For A-Day students, Thursday and Fridays are remote, day, or remote learning days. And uh, for B-Day students, Tuesday and Wednesdays are remote learning students. For, for remote learning. Starting on October 13th, and that is just a two-day week, the 13th and 14th, we're going to have all students in the building. That's the first time we're going to have all students in the building. And then um, starting that following week, we have about three weeks leading up until November 9th, where all students are in the building uh, at the same schedule, 8.30 to 2.10, but it's not quite every student every day. It's every student Tuesday through Friday. Um, and then on November 9th is when we will go to five days a week, hopefully, um, every student every day. So for the next three, three and a half weeks, we will be using some of these tech tools like Seesaw and Google Classroom. And, and, then, for the, and then for another four or five Mondays, because Mondays remain remote learning for quite some time. And it's also really just to learn all of these tools because we never know when we might need to rely more on technology than in-person learning, right? And so um, students are learning these tools right now in class. And um, this is an opportunity for you to catch up a little bit with what students are already doing. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to uh, play the video we put together and then we will get to your questions. Today I'm going to show you how to access Clever and Google Classroom from our website starting September 28th. Kids in grades third through fifth will be accessing and completing assignments on remote learning days through Google Classroom. We will have practiced this in class, but this is for you to see in case you need to step in and help log in. So the easiest way to access Clever is through our Russell website, mcpsmt.org slash Russell, and go to the library tab. There you'll find over here on the right hand corner, right hand side, it says links for you and you're going to click Clever. It will bring you to this page and you will want to click login with Google. So when students log in to Clever or Google at school, this domain of their website, of the email address is already provided. So this is a place where you may need to step in and help them write in the full domain, or type in, excuse me, of the email. So the email consists of their graduation year, the first three of their last name, followed by the first three of their first name, and then that domain here. 
it must be added at home. They're used to it already being given to them, but this at student.mcpsmt.org has to be added to log in at home. I'm going to pause right there in case you want to write that down that it's graduation year followed by the first three letters of last name and the first three letters of first name, their legal name. And then the email domain is at student.mcpsmt.org. So if you need to write that down, here's a good time to do that. We will press login with Google. And then this is where they're going to have to type in their full email address using that at mcpsmt.org. I'm gonna use the students today to show you an example of how it looks for a student. So we do that and then we do the password. They should know their password or it should be referenced somewhere in their homework folder or agendas somewhere. So when we log in to Clever, it's going to have, um, this student has a couple pages ready to go. And down here, there's a bunch of different ones that they will be able to click without having to re-log in. iReady is our new math program, so they'll probably be using this this year. Brain pops an awesome thing, but right now I'm going to show you Google Classroom. So this student, I'm gonna pick example, classroom. So when it brings you into Google Classroom, there's a stream which kind of has things kind of all over the place with assigned work and prompts and directions. So the easiest place to go is this classwork tab. This is the stream. So we're gonna go to the classwork tab. We're gonna find Monday's work. We go into an assignment. This one happens to be a Google Slides assignment. And the assignment will pop up. Once the student works on it, they can go back to their classwork and assignments, view assignment. And this is where they can turn in their work. And it asks, are you sure you want to turn it in? And it has the attachment that she was working on, so we turn it in. Um, it will look different based on each teacher, but Google Classroom is pretty easy to navigate. Um, one last thing I will say about Clever is that when you're in this Clever portal, if you have multiple students at Russell School or in MCPS using Clever, you want to make sure that you have the correct student logged in. Over here on the side, if you realize, oops, I have the wrong student logged in if multiple people are using the same computer, I can simply go over here, log out, and it will take me back to this page and I can log in with a different student's account. If you have any questions, please reach out to your child's teacher. Thank you. Okay, and thank you, Jenna, for that tutorial. Let me get back out here. Sorry about that. My computer's doing some funny things. Oh my gosh, how do I get back to where I'm looking at everyone? Mm. You wanna I'm gonna stop sharing first of all. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the main thing. All right. Um, so that was that was uh, Jenna's voice that you were hearing throughout that tutorial. So thank you, Jenna, for doing that. Um, so that is the way to log in. So and you know there are really two places you can log in to Clever. Uh, you can go through the district website and you can click on Web Connect and then under the student portal you'll see Clever or as, as Jenna just showed you, you can go directly to the Russell website, which is probably the easiest way 
to do it. Um, you'll notice that there are, <clears throat> there are three days of remote learning for the time being. For some teachers, they may have them as specific dates. For some teachers, they might be logged as day one, day two, and day three. Know that that's, that's essentially all the same, right? If my student is an A-day student, they go to school on Tuesday and Wednesday. There might be dates that have Thursday, Friday, and Monday's date, or it might just say day one, day two, day three, so that it's not confusing for my B-day students. So just to be aware of that. As far as um, expectations for learning, um, I've had some questions about, is any of this during remote days live learning? Uh, the answer is no. Um, any of this can be done on your own time. And so, for instance, I have a kindergartner. Um, we've been doing one of the remote learning days on Sundays because I'm home and it, it's helpful to, uh, to have me help out. So um, sometimes we do it on Saturday and then sometimes he gets Monday off. So it's really for you to do on your own time. It's more task oriented than it is time oriented. Um, you'll, you'll also hear a lot that it's one and a half hours of work, um, of learning on these remote days. Um, please understand that doesn't necessarily mean an hour and a half of screen time. What we mean by an hour and a half is the things they are going to be assigned and they will be assigned through Google Classroom are expected to take about an hour and a half. So it might include 30 minutes of reading a book that they bring home. And obviously that's not screen time and that is included in their hour and a half for that day. So we're really talking about an hour and a half of work but Google Classroom is where you're, they're going to do quite a bit of the work, excuse me, but it's also going to be where they find out what their assignments are. It doesn't mean it's an hour and a half of screen time. Um, another question I've got also is just about devices. Um, you will probably either have already received an email from your teacher or will be receiving one very soon asking uh, what your device situation at home is. And so if you will be needing one for at-home learning, um, please fill out that survey through your Eva email and your teacher will work on getting you um, that device. The last thing, and then we'll go to just questions. Uh, the last thing is I've had some people ask about, so what is the start date for at-home learning? And it really depends on when your kid goes to school. So. If your student goes to school on Tuesday and Wednesday, the first at-home learning day is that Thursday, which is October 1st. If your student goes to school on Thursday, Friday, their first at-home learning day would be that Monday, which is October 5th. So um, the learning might be pushed out by the teacher anytime leading up to that October 1st date, uh, but those are the dates they, that the first day they might be logging in to uh, complete some of the work. Now is your time. Um, questions um, that any of you may have. I, he, I see a screen that says Davey. I'm Vicki. Hi, Vicki. Hi. I missed something between when you were initially talking about um, the October calendar and you said uh, October 13, all students would be in the building. Mm -hmm. And then you said something else, which I missed, and then it went to 11-9 every student every day. So okay. can you repeat that, please? Absolutely. So, and you will get this, um, you'll get a calendar from me very soon detailing all of this by oh. email. Um, but essentially, it's every student every day, October um, 13th and 14th. And then from, the three weeks from October 19th through October 5th, those three weeks, uh, all students are coming to school in person four days a week, Tuesday through Friday. So November 9th is when we're starting five days a week for all students. Thank you. It's a fair question. There's lots of <laughs> questions about the schedule. I'm a note person. I have to write it down. That's all right. Jeanne, you have a question. Or Jean? Or oh, Jeannie. Jeannie. <laughs> okay. Um, I, the Google Classroom worked great last year. It didn't have any trouble last uh, spring. Um, but two things that we had issues with. One was ReadyGen. Um, it was uh, 
really difficult to use online and um, particularly for uh, kind of struggling readers, it, I wanted some way to use a textbook because it was so hard to use ReadyGen. So I'm wondering um, what's gonna happen with that. Um, and my other thing was um, we got no feedback on any assignments last year at all. And so I'm hoping there's some feedback with remote learning too. I will address the first part or the second part and then I'll have um, one of the others address the first part. Um, okay. Teachers have been hearing consistently both from the district and from myself that one of the expectations during these remote learning days is feedback. Um, it doesn't have to be a ton of feedback, but it has to be um, enough for students and parents to, um, to know that really that the teacher's um, looking at it and they're, right. they're giving some helpful feedback. So the focus during these days is not so much on grading. Um, the focus is more on feedback. Um, so yes, and then uh, Jenna or Anna, do you wanna jump in about the ready, Jen? Go ahead, Jenna. I would imagine since we're gonna only be in a few weeks doing remote learning once a week that you won't necessarily have to link to ReadyGen primarily. Yeah. Or yeah. if it's a book that we're reading, you could either the teacher will send it home or you could request it because we have copies for students. So Great. Um, it won't be, and it is, it's not friendly, that ReadyGen website. No, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I ended not. up in the spring, I just took pictures of all the pages and then like, or I like screenshotted them and it was because I just didn't want to deal with it. But yeah, that's not a that's friendly what I website. did too. <laughs> so if it's something you're finding, I would just ask to have it sent home because I Great. think it'll be so nice now that we can give materials and Yes. Uh, different things that it'll be a lot better than it was in the spring for yes. sure so I get your frustration there though <laughs> okay great I, I will great. piggyback on that as well I think for a lot of parents and guardians hearing remote learning brings up certain alarms in your brain and in your head because that was the start of a pandemic and something no one had done before um, I think one of the significant differences is that um, we have your students in person two days now, four days um, coming up, so we can send home um, computers that way. We can send home books. We can give feedback more often. So there's just, it, it's going to be a lot different. It's more of a practice day for your student for what they're learning rather than here's, here's all the learning and here's the only way we can give it to you. So um, I think it's going to be a, a much better experience really for everyone. Great. I was also going to say, I think that um, there might be some ac uh, accessing the, the ready math online that uh, Jenna pointed out. It has uh, squares on the page, but it's right there on the clever page and they click on it and it puts them right on the landing page and they'll have assignments right in there for them to do. Google Classroom will tell them go to iReady and they'll go to the square and clever and then go practice some math. I do really anticipate that happening, Jenna. Yeah, yeah, in the math is so accessible and nice and clear. I could nice. actually show you that in a second if you'd like me to pull it up just to see what it looks like. Um, nice. yeah. I'll pull that up and I'll help you in a second, but it's super great. So I'll log in and I'll let you know when I'm ready. Okay. Thanks, Jenna. Um, there's a question about dismissal time. So starting on November 9th, when we go five days a week, will school still be dismissed at the same time? Yes. So as long as we are in hybrid or phase two is what we're calling it, um, the school day will be from 8.30 to 2.10. Uh, that would only change if we were to go to phase three, which is basically the way things were before a pandemic, um, which is hard to imagine that being anytime super soon. So I would plan on 8.30 to 2.10 for the long haul. Okay, any other questions? Are you Jen? ready to do that, Jenna? Um, Just one second, okay. Jolene, excuse me, can you see me? 
Yes, go me. ahead. Um, Jolene had just written a question that popped up. Oh, okay. Um, when I see that my child has answered questions wrong to you, do you want me to go over it with them or just let them turn it in wrong? Um, does one of my teachers want to answer that? I think that's definitely, I would say home learning, you're the teacher, you're in the teacher's shoes. So actively having them correct or um, when you're at home or answers, especially since we're not putting a grade on it, it's great practice. I would recommend just writing a little note like, um, or circling them or something and then being like corrected the circled ones just so we have an idea. But I say by all means, please step in and help them fix their mistakes because that's what we would do in the classroom. The other thing I would say, I can see this especially happening with math is, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of practice work, which is practicing the skills that they're learning, they just learned in school. But there might be some pre-teaching um, or pre-learning. So they might be assigned something that they haven't done a ton in school so that they can do a little bit of productive struggle. Um, and, but, you know, the teacher might indicate this is not something we've done a lot of in class. We just want your student to work on this and then we will cover it again in class. Um, and again, the point is not to get it right. The point is to have that productive struggle. Good. I'm ready. Okay. Ready, set. I was having a hard time. I had, I have a permission from a student's parent to use hers to show. And I was having a hard time getting the student logged into Clever because it kept wanting to log me into Clever, which wouldn't be very helpful, but here we go. So this is the Clever page. Um, the way the student sees it is exactly the way I see it. Teachers can um, make a little page for themselves. Um, I haven't explored that very much, but right here are all the apps. And iReady is the new math, this cube looking one. And all you have to do is click that. Since you're already logged into Clever, you don't have to log in again. And on the right, it says My Path. So all students will have taken a diagnostic assessment, hopefully by um, the time we're assigning things online. Um, and here on the right, it says my path. So from the diagnostic results, the program, the program automatically assigns lessons that they need to work on, that they, where they're ready to learn at, if, whether it be a whole or an extension or whatever. Um, so that's this next lesson here on the right where it says my path. So um, the student can go, in there, I haven't seen this, but it's an iReady at home. And these are really engaging lessons. Um, and it'll just keep spitting out lessons. I don't think that it'll ever end. If they could sit there forever and take all these lessons. Um, but you'll see here on the left, this student's teacher has assigned a lesson. So you may hear the teacher say, do an assigned lesson and a lesson from your path or however they want to word it. But that would mean the path, if you want another activity to do, you could put your student on and they could just do a couple lessons. I believe they're around 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and my kids have been eating them up and have really enjoyed them. And then this one here on the left is straight from the teacher, like what they're learning right now. So it's not a lot of clicking. It's right there, ready to go. You don't have to, it's very user friendly. So I just wanted to show you this. And it has like games and I don't know. I'll tell Sam that I did. I started a no lesson for. Everyone is so scared. It's of just rap. a lot of fun. They really like it. Getting me out of some serious jams. That's exactly why I've started. No more number nightmares. Send me your real world math problems live now at Mathline. Genius. Ooh, our first victim. Just kidding. My class. So anyway, there's like a lesson and then it asks questions and kind of like walks through it, the question and it's super um, engaging. So I just wanted to show you that. 
Thanks, Jenna. You're welcome. <laughs> I see another question in the chat. How many students are in each class when they are five days a week? Will there still be a six foot um, distance requirement? I will answer that before we get off. I want to make sure there's um, no more questions specifically about Google Classroom or iReady. And then I'd be happy to answer that question. Okay, um, so if you watched last night's board meeting, there's a lot of back and forth specifically about this. Um, thankfully at Russell, our class sizes are pretty darn small, even if we have everyone come back. Um, keep in mind that the online academy has uh, over 1800 students, K-12. K and so that's basically an entire school district from the uh, 15 schools we have in the district that have gone to that school, including about 54 at last count from Russell. So that obviously decreases our class sizes. Um, in our 3-5, and I'll address that because that's the parents we have here, I don't think we have any classes that are going to be bigger um, than the, the low 20s and um, 22 to 20, 23, I think will be our biggest class. And then we have classes as small as 14 as well. So um, our range goes from anywhere from 14 to 23 in the grades three through five. Um, as far as the six foot distancing, really what we, you know, what our superintendent, Mr. Watson, Dr. Watson has been saying is once we go back every kid every day, um, the goal is really not going to be to, to socially distance every kid at all times. Um, because that is not necessarily feasible. Um, of course, we will try. It's an aspirational goal, um, but it's not something we can guarantee. But what we will be doing and what be, we, we will be really thoughtful and careful about is we want to make sure that every student is, a, is in close contact to the fewest number of students as possible. So I might have 15 classmates but I might only be a close contact of three of them because I am eating next to the same kids. I am I'm having breakfast next to the same kids. I might be doing reading group with the same kids. I might be doing group work with the same kids. So teachers are being really intentional about making sure that if, you know, rather than one of the 16 kids in the class is uh, test positive, um, heaven forbid, then ev we, everyone has to go get tested and, and quarantine. Where really, if that were to happen, we're just talking about two or three kids being having to quarantine rather than the full 15 or 16. Um, yes, that could still be your child, unfortunately, but that makes the odds, that decreases the odds significantly of it being your child. Um, and so we're really, um, that we're being really thoughtful about that. And then we're also wearing masks at all times, washing our hands continuously through the day and making sure our cohorts, our classrooms are not mixing with other classrooms, mixing with other adults so that the possibility of spread is at an absolute minimum. So that's, that's the best way I can answer that question in, in a short format. <laughs> Thank you, Jolene. Any other questions? Okay, so if you were here just for Google Classroom, um, you can log off now and enjoy the rest of your evening. If you are a parent who has gotten the email about, you need to fill out the annual notices for your child, and you haven't done so, we're going to go through that process step by step. And so if you want to knock something off your to-do list, uh, stay on the line and we will get started with that process in about 30 seconds. But before we do, again, just wanna say a huge thank you to all of you for being here. And thank you to Jenna for putting together the video and all the tutorials. Thank you to Anna for her help as well. And um, we hope this has been helpful. Thank you to all of you. We really appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so going to leave now. Thank you.
All right, Liz, Maddie, and it says Ren's iPad. And um, I know that's that's Anna's parents. Yeah. This is okay, so I will start um, the video on the annual notices. And I will stop it a couple of times um, so that we can make sure everyone is caught up. I'm also going to stop the recording right now.